This is a very hard question, and it is a good one to skip if you are not shooting for an 800. Um, take a good guess and move on, and there's going to be much easier stuff to come. But this requires a, a, like a really solid understanding of how function notation works. If I were to ask you, here's how you can decide whether you should skip this or not. If I were to ask you, how many equations do you see in this question? What's your answer? If you say two, you should skip it. This is one equation. That's what function notation means. It means that this f of x and this f of x plus a are really the same. f is our equation. And that consistency is what makes this really the same kind of thing. And so what we're supposed to do here is we're supposed to recognize that x plus a is like a number. And we don't know two of the components of the number, the x and the a. But because it's in those parentheses, it means that we could plug that value in to our f equation, which we were told right here. So this is the main equation. And they're saying that there's some number a that if we plugged x plus this number into that original equation, we, we would get a different equation. We would get something weirder that we would solve for. And that's kind of annoying because there's no a's on the right side of, of this. And so it feels separate, but it's not. And so what we really want to do is we want to pretend that f uh, or x plus a is x, right? It's in that same spot. So we want to pretend that that is just an x. And I know that it's not just an x, it's an x plus an a. But the way that function notation works is the f is the constant thing. f is an instruction. And x or x plus a, those are the inputs that we run through the program, that we run through the instruction manual. And they pop out another number. But if we run something through that isn't completely a number, that has an x in it, we don't just get a new number on the outside, we get a new equation on the outside. And that's kind of what's going on here. So what we need to do is we need to compare the outputs. We know the output when we have the x plus a. If we take this x plus a and input it into the other version, we should get the same output because it's supposed to be the same number. Again, if this is not making a lot of sense, it's a good reason to skip it. This is about as clear as it can get. So watch what we do here. We're going to take f of x plus a, and we're going to put that x plus a in place of all of the x's in that equation. So that means we're going to do 5x plus a squared minus 3. And we're going to solve it. So let's kind of move some space here. So 5x plus a times x plus a. You might want to write this out so you can FOIL it. So that's x squared plus 2ax plus a squared minus 3. And then we distribute 5x squared plus 10ax plus 5a squared minus 3. And we know that f of x plus a is also equal to this other complicated thing. So now we, we want to say, how do these two things compare? This is like another question in this section. We've had a couple of these where we have to kind of really focus on the structure of an equation. So we notice some similarities. We notice that they both have the same x squared term, 5x squared. So for our purposes, since there's no other x squareds, we can kind of ignore that because those pieces are balanced. Those pieces check out. We've, they're accounted for. However, this one has a 30x, and this one has a 10ax. Those two pieces, and so the only ones with x's, are supposed to balance out. And so what we can do is we can say, well, that's kind of like a mini equation. 30x is supposed to equal 10ax. What would make that true if a were 3, which is an answer. It's the answer. And we could confirm that because we also know that 42, the one term without an x, is also supposed to be 
equal to these other terms that don't have an x. It's two terms, because there's an a, but it's still no x's. So we can make another equation. 42 is equal to 5. We know a. Let's put that in now. 3 squared minus 3. So 42 is, in fact, equal to 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45 minus 3. So it checks out. And we could have gone directly to that equation first if we wanted and ignored the x's, but same, same result. So what's the strategy here? I really don't know. Mem memorize, maybe? Even that, I think this is just really, really tough. And it goes to show you that what we know about questions 21 to 30 in the calculator section is that they're supposed to be hard. But not all hard questions are equal. Right? Some are harder than others. Some might be hard for you, easy for someone else. Um, and you have to be a good judge. If you are shooting for an 800, you need to understand how this works and that basically the input is going to, may look different, but the output should be the same because the, the thing that's constant here is the f, the, the function, the thing that we're doing to the number is the same. And so we should be able to put something in and get the same thing out no matter what, even if the, the, the input looks different in two different cases. Uh, but if that's confusing, look, there's going to be better stuff to come. And if you're not shooting for that perfect 800, if you're just like would be happy with a 700, a 600, this is not a priority for you. These, this is not worth your time or your headache. Go on to things that you do understand. 25 is not necessarily going to be harder than 24. 30 is not necessarily going to be harder than 24. They stagger them a little bit. And person to person, it's going to differ. It's going to differ. So you need to be a good judge and be willing to quit. That's the key. There's no shame in quitting. You got to get as many points as you can in a certain amount of time. And that might mean quitting on some things here. And I think this is like the perfect example of a question that is a good one to quit on for most people. Hopefully it didn't slow you down too much and you were able to pick up some points later on.